Today we're going to be going over the three main components of the hair. Last time, Val, we talked about the hair structure, so today we're gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive of what lives inside that hair structure. So Val, why don't you let me know what those three main components are? So the hair is actually divided into three distinct sections. If you were to cut the hair across the diameter and look at it under a microscope, you would see an area we call the cuticle, an area we call the cortex, and then the medulla in the center. The cuticle is one of the most important components of hair structure because it's what the outside world sees. Imagine a roof has shingles on it and layered over each other like tiles. That's what the cuticle looks like and it's responsible for the hair's luster, how shiny it is, is it reflecting light, is it protecting the hair. It's really the first line of defense before you get to the inside of the hair. If you look at the cuticle, it's actually colorless. There's no color to it if you were to chip a little piece off. It's mostly comprised of protein and amino acids. So with the cuticle, that's the most important part to kind of work and so it, to me, I see it as it ebbs and flows open and close based on what we're doing with hair color. So a lot of times I know when we're talking about hair color, there's claims that it's low structural damage or it won't, you know, opens the cuticle as least as possible. But with hair color, as we understand it as hairdressers, I think there's a misconception that each color that we do on our guests has it serves its purpose in order to get in there and really change what we need to do so opening up the cuticle isn't necessarily a bad thing right no you need the product to penetrate into the hair fiber and that's why hair color and bleaches have such a high ph because the cuticle swells open those shingles swell a little bit and allows product to slip in between inside of the hair fiber where the cortex is. Nice, so when we're working with hair color and we are opening up that cuticle, what happens once that cuticle's open? What part of the hair are we affecting at that point? So you're only impacting the cuticle at that point mm -hmm. and if the treatment is extremely aggressive, like bleaches can be in some hair colors, the cuticle will start to chip away even if you're not performing a chemical treatment, hair naturally weathers is what I call it. It's exposed to UV rays, it's exposed to water from the shower, the air, oxygen, it oxidizes, and heat styling tools, if you blow dry your hair, even combing your hair provides mechanical action over the cuticle, and all of these things can break it away and then the protection to the inside of the hair is removed and gone. So that would explain when a guest comes in and their hair is just kind of looking frizzy or lacks shine and luster or just kind of looks and appears open, that is because of the cuticle. Exactly, the cuticle could just be missing. Okay, and then with our virgin hair, kind of what we talked about in the previous episode where when that virgin hair is kind of almost slick looking and it has like that really nice shine, that makes sense. Once you go past the eight to 16 layers the cuticle has, you are inside the cortex of the hair, which is the biggest part of the hair fiber. It's actually 80% of the geography of the hair fiber. And inside the cortex is where your melanin pigment lives. You have more protein, you have more lipids gluing everything together. And that's where the bulk of the action happens when you're coloring the hair or lightening to lift the melanin from the hair fiber. As a colorist, I really love this information, understanding the cuticle a little bit more and um, in a deeper layer, no pun intended. But I also would like to know how can lightener and permanent hair color get into the deeper part of the hair if that protective layer is there? Well, it's not easy, which can explain some of the struggles you may have in the salon. So mm -hmm. we have mentioned in the past that hair is biologically dead, but chemically alive. And so we use the chemistry of the lightener or the hair color to manipulate the cuticle in a way to get everything in. So lighteners typically have a pH between 11 and 12 when mixed with developer and color has a pH between nine and 10 permanent color. And it's this pH range that allows the hair to swell open and the cuticle layers start to repel each other in that swelling and that gives space for whatever hair preparation you've done, a lightener or a hair color, yeah. to sneak inside and migrate into the hair fiber in the cortex. So Val, we understand that the cuticle being open plays this huge role in hair color and lightening and all of that. So how important is it to journey back down with that cuticle closing it and making mm. it sealed? Extremely important. So you're performing a reactive process on the hair when you're lightening, coloring, there's actual chemistry happening inside the hair and you want that chemistry to stop. You don't want it to keep going because that's when you'll get 
excessive damage to the hair fiber. So it's really important to follow it up with a thorough shampoo like Post Color Protect Shampoo, which does a very great job from stopping the reaction from proceeding and getting all of the remnant chemistry out of the hair, like excess bleach, hydrogen peroxide, and excess dye molecules that haven't coupled. And then the pH of the hair is still not quite back down to where it was before, so it's important to follow up with an acidic conditioner like Color Protect Conditioner. So with these products, does that mean that the cuticle is nice and closed into a nice state? What happens? Yeah, if you follow the shampoo with something that has a low pH, it should seal right back up and the hair will look shiny and healthy. Nice, so that explains a nice shiny end result versus one that's a little fuzzy. <laughs> so Val, when we're working with, with our permanent hair color or lightener, that's when we would maybe choose a lightener versus a permanent hair color if somebody no longer has virgin hair because of that melanin living in that cortex, is that correct? Well, I think it depends what exactly you wanna do. So both lightener and hair color actually lighten the hair, but when you use hair color, not only are you lightening the hair because of the ammonia and the hydrogen peroxide, you're depositing color. So it just depends what effect you want and how much dominant pigment you want to remove from the hair fiber. That's great, because I think that's really gonna help people behind the chair understand what they're doing a little bit more. And I think that's a common question that we get is when would I use permanent hair color versus lightener? And that gives a great explanation to that. And what's that final part that to the hair structure that we The care medulla, about? we don't really talk about it a lot because the function is currently unknown. The medulla is just a cavity running through the center part of the hair fiber and some people have a large medulla, some people have a small medulla, and even in parts of body hair the medulla size differs. So if you were to put hair color on your eyebrows, which I do not recommend, it's against <laughs> manufacturer directions, you'll notice that the color fades very quickly because it has a very large medulla. So there's not enough cortex in an eyebrow hair to hold the dye in. But on your head hair the medulla is very tiny or non-existent. It doesn't run along the full length of the hair fiber. It could be a small cavity and then a space of the hair and then another cavity. It may have some evolutionary purpose. One of the reasons we have hair is to provide heat entrapment and insulation to our bodies and so they think the medulla may have some role in that over time. Uh, but it's just an empty space filled with nitrogen today. Wow, that's fascinating. So this really helps kind of break that down a little deeper. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Jen. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you were able to understand what the three main sections of the hair fiber is. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments section. And next time we're gonna talk about how those parts stick together when we talk about bonds of the hair.